Libido is all around us, Neo. It is everywhere, even in this very room. Take the red pill, and you'll go back to Wonderland. Take the blue pill, and I'll show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Sex is a complicated behavior. It involves physical, social, and emotional components. It involves coordination of many brain areas and the rest of the body, including the genitals. And it involves a concert of hormones and neurotransmitters interacting together. It's strongly influenced by development, such that there can be profound differences between individuals. So there's a lot that is difficult to study about sex. But I wanted to highlight a few things that have been uh, studied so far. Now, most research has been done on individuals whose biological sex matches their gender, which means there are a lot of unknowns, which to a scientist means a lot of research opportunities. Still, a simplified version of this story can help point to some key elements of the human sexual response. That said, usually when we think about sexual function or dysfunction, we think of it as a singular construct, a single thing. However, it may be more useful to think of it more like a symphony. A symphony typically has usually four movements. They have an allegro movement, which is fast, andante or adagio, which is slow, and then the dance, the scherzo or minuet, scherzo means joke, uh, and then the finale, uh, which is again allegro, which is big, and impressive. Now the human sexual response is similar to that, but it has three phases. And uh, the first stage is sometimes called libido. Now that refers to the feeling of sexual desire. A circuit of connected brain areas called the mesolimbic dopamine system is controlled largely by dopamine neurotransmitters. Uh, and it's involved in the processing of rewards. Now, other rewards, not just sexual rewards, may be uh, processed by this same system. So things like uh, drugs of abuse uh, may also exploit this uh, dopamine, uh, this mesolimbic dopamine uh, pathway. We also know that testosterone can regulate this system. How do we know? Well, I want to walk you through uh, a really quick study that you can do with rats. Before puberty, what you do is you take a rat and you castrate it. Then as adults, you give them amphetamine, which is known to uh, cause dopamine release in this pathway. Now, then you use a technique called microdialysis, where you insert tiny, tiny tubes into the target area of the brain. You pump some fluid in, and then that causes fluid to come out of the brain. And so you're getting fluid from the brain with some of the neurotransmitters that you're interested in. Then you can measure the level of dopamine in that fluid. And what we find is that uh, the rats who have been castrated uh, release more dopamine in response to the amphetamine than a control group that wasn't castrated. Now furthermore, if you give them testosterone replacement therapy, to replace the testosterone that they were missing in development, that effect goes away so that both of them re release equal amounts of dopamine. So this suggests that testosterone is playing a critical role at regulating that system or modulating that system. Estrogen may play a similar role uh, with more estrogen causing more increased libido. On the other hand, the hormone uh, prolactin can reduce libido. So we have brain areas, neurotransmitters, and hormones all working together. Now we can also divide the peripheral nervous system into two sections, the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. You've probably heard of the sympathetic nervous system as referred to as uh, uh, fight or flight responses. So whenever you need physiological arousal, to act quickly on something, your sympathetic nervous system tends to take over. It helps to, uh, to uh, muster your energy 
to be used quickly. On the other hand, the parasympathetic nervous system is quite the opposite. It's there for when you need to restore and conserve energy. So things like, a lot of times it's referred to as rest and digest. And those are general rules of thumb how to think about them. But the point is these two systems uh, work in opposition to each other and activation of the sympathetic nervous system inhibits the parasympathetic and activation of the parasympathetic inhibits the sympathetic. This first phase of libido involves sympathetic nervous system activity. The second phase is called sexual arousal. This phase involves inhibiting sympathetic nervous system activity and boosting parasympathetic activity. And this is going to be the phase in which you get things like erections and lubrication and swelling in the genitals. And some of the critical neurotransmitters in the genital region that are uh, acting are nitric oxide and acetylcholine. Uh, these are both important in the genitals for promoting arousal. Estrogen may also be important for promoting arousal as well, especially for women. And then we move on to the third phase. The third phase is orgasm. This involves a switching back on of the sympathetic nervous system. So uh, also involved, the, the neurotransmitter norepinephrine promotes orgasm, whereas serotonin, on the other hand, inhibits orgasm and ejaculation. Okay, now I know just listing a bunch of uh, neurotransmitters and brain areas and hormones by itself um, isn't always that meaningful. So we wonder, how can we use this information? Well, it turns out that sexual dysfunction may have many causes, and these causes are likely to have different underlying mechanisms. For example, depression and endocrine disorders are most likely to impact stage one, uh, which is libido. In fact, uh, the commonly prescribed classes of drugs used for depression, SSRIs, that stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, basically what they do is they leave extra serotonin at the synapse. But the problem is, uh, we said serotonin inhibits orgasm and ejaculation. And so it may be the case that you're depressed, that interferes with your libido, but then you take a drug that exacerbates the problem because you're taking an SSRI that's producing, uh, causing more serotonin, and therefore now you start having problems with other phases of the, uh, the sexual uh, function. Um, likewise, conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, uh, drug abuse might be likely to affect stage two or sexual arousal. So things like alcohol especially, uh, in this case, a different set of treatments might be warranted to overcome that problem. In other words, different problems need different treatments, and different disorders create different problems. By gaining an understanding of the specific problem we need to solve, we can better improve both the physical and mental health of the people who need it. Okay, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, hit the like button, it's free. Uh, and if you want more videos on psychology and how to use it, hit subscribe, that's also free, because we have a lot more videos on the way. Okay, have a great day and I will see you next time. Oh damn, it's yellow. I don't actually have any drugs. These are Skittles. Taste the rainbow, bitches.